I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Petek here. Welcome to SFF Spotlight episode 46. And this means that uh, this is the penultimate episode of SFF Spotlight in the year 2023. I have only one more episode of SFF Spotlight remaining uh, this year, and I will post that probably uh, around the 20th of December. But for now, yeah, this is the penultimate episode of SFF Spotlight this year. And I just want to say uh, thank you so much to those of you who tuned in into my previous episodes and all the previous episodes because evidently the previous SFF Spotlight episode became the best SFF Spotlight episode in terms of performance on my YouTube channel. And I only have all of you to thank for that. And for those of you who are new here, just like always, SFF Spotlight is a series of videos where I will talk about new book news, new cover reveals, new special edition, new Kickstarter campaign, and also new noteworthy release in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. But there is something a bit special about today's uh, SFF Spotlight episode because this will be the first time that probably a bit salty Patrick will appear in uh, the episode. But before that, I also must mention and this is still kind of related to SFF Spotlight. This episode of SFF Spotlight is getting a sponsor and it is related to web novel. So let's talk about that first. Since I posted my web novels to read next year video, I've been getting questions on where to read uh, great web novels. There are plenty of ways to do this and I want to use today's SFF Spotlight episode to talk about one of them web novel, which I am also glad to say is the sponsor of today's video. If you are unfamiliar with reading web novels, one of the most popular genres of web novels are system novels. Another term for system novels you might know from watching my channel is lit RPG. Basically, a system novel is a subgenre of web novels that revolves around characters gaining or acquiring a system within the story world. The system presents character with tasks, missions, or quests to complete, allowing them to level up, gain new abilities, acquire powerful items, or unlock hidden potential. It introduces game-like mechanics such as experience points, skills, levels, and rewards. A few examples of this are solo leveling or web novels on popular and highly praised title, reincarnated with the strongest system, and this is the premise of the series. Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Regardless, Amaltea said as she held William in her loving embrace. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. In order to help his little brothers and sisters at the orphanage and save the person he loves, William decided to make the ultimate sacrifice. This selfless act moved the hearts of the gods into gift William the opportunity to enter the cycle of reincarnation with their blessings. Together with his mama Ella and a herd of goods, William embarks on a new journey to find the meaning of happiness in his new life in a world of swords and magic where adventures roam wild and free. The tale of the legendary shepherd is about to begin. Of course, reincarnated to the stronger system is not the only system worth trying. If you're interested in checking out some other system novels, you can check out some of their highly praised titles on web novel such as Shadow Slave, my Vampire System, Versatile Superstar, Rise of the Primordial Godsmith, and one of my top favorite series, Solo Leveling. And yes, you can read all of this for free on the Web Novel website. And at the moment, Web Novel app will be hosting an in-app event where readers can participate in tasks and receive gifts. You can install the application, search for the code system, or click the link in the description down below. Read on now. And now moving on to the next topic, I think it is time for Salty Patrick to make an appearance first. So yeah, let's talk about this one. Uh, for those of you who are not on Twitter, there has been a crazy and insane drama going on right now. And this is related to review bombing on Goodreads. If, if possible, I don't want to put a spotlight on this, but I think it is also important to talk about this sometimes. And well, I want to talk about it in today's episode. So an author, a debut author with a book being released in the year 2024, specifically probably on May 2024, Crown of Starlight by Kate. Corinne. Apparently, the author made multiple fake accounts and then dropped five stars reviews for their own books, which, well, I guess I can kind of understand they want to boost the ratings or something like that. They want to boost the rating of their own debuts before the book is out, I guess, although I do not agree with that at all. But what makes things even worse is that Apparently, Kate Corain, the multiple fake accounts are being used to drop one-star reviews and ratings across fellow 2024 debut authors. And I'm just so mind blown. This is so useless and I have no idea what is the purpose here. Maybe racism? 
poor ego, poor confidence, and also just jealousy. I have no idea, but I do know one thing. This is incredibly useless unless you actually want to destroy your own book reading, which is happening right now. At the time of recording this video, people are finding out about this, and there are so many details surrounding this drama. It is insane. And I will leave the links to all the details in the description down below. But for now, yeah, this is what happened. The author made multiple fake accounts and then dropped five stars reviews for their own books. But at the same time, dropping one-star ratings and reviews across all 2024 fantasy and sci-fi debut author. I'm just, I, I think it is just so stupid, ridiculously stupid. If this is actually your idea of thinking that this will boost your ranking on Goodreads, or maybe you're just trying to be a villain, then I do not want to read the villain in your book. I do not think it will be well written at all. But yeah, this situation is really bad. Fellow authors should support each other, especially this is your fellow 2024 debut authors. And there is always a slight chance that this is proven wrong. And then you, all of you will just say that, why, why am I making quick a judgment on this? But, and I think at this stage, it is almost irrefutable that this is indeed the author of The Crown of Starlight, and these are all fake accounts made by the author, which is just an absolute shame because as far as I know, the book actually do gain some positive reviews before all this situation. I just don't get it. The amount of effort and time required to make these multiple accounts, multiple fake reviews, it is very time consuming. You could have used this to do literally anything else like write your own sequel or hone your writing craft or do something else that makes you happy. This is just crazy to me. Apparently 2023 is not ending without a big drama and this is currently going on right now. I don't know, maybe by the time I post this video, something bad will happen again uh, regarding this entire situation. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this negative news. But if you're an author and you're watching this right now, be confident about your book. Your book is out. It is not up to you to dictate how it should be rated. Readers will either like or dislike your books. It's all a matter of taste and reading experience. So yeah, once again, do let me know what you think about this news. But now onward to the good things and still Speaking about Goodreads, the results of Goodreads Awards 2023 is out now. None of the winners are actually books that I have read. In fiction, the winner is Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang, which I heard uh, plenty of great things about. And then in the fantasy category, the winner is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. Again, I haven't read this one. And then in Romanticy, as expected, it is The Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. And then in YA Fantasy, it's another highly praised book titled The Divine Rivals by uh, Rebecca Ross. But in sci-fi, uh, the winner is In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Kloon. And then there are more like uh, Stephen King. I think Stephen King actually won uh, the horror category with Holly. But yeah, I haven't read any of the winners of the Goodreads Awards 2023. If you have read any of this, do let me know what you think about them. I think uh, the one that I vote for Fantasy Tress of the Emerald Sea actually became the runner-up, so yeah, that's quite good. Two more book news and then we will talk about TV show and movie adaptation. Uh, the next one is regarding the Sun Eater series by Christopher Rokiu. So Christopher has announced uh, in his newsletter that This Quiet Gods is completely finished. And apparently, if you want to buy an electronic adventuring copy from the publisher, meaning that you can actually read this book much earlier. I think this will be, uh, I think this will take place in the month of January. It is possible to buy an e-arc of this quiet guts. The sixth and the penultimate installment in the Sun Eater series. As for me, I'm still making my way through the Sun Eater series right now. I just finished reading a Demon in White and I will post my review for that, my full review for Demon in White uh, next week. So I think in January, I'll be reading Kingdoms of Death anyway. So I won't be buying the electronic adventure copy of this quiet guts. But I definitely look forward to reading this quiet guts uh, next year. But first I have to read Kingdoms of Death and also the ashes of man first. And then for the next topic, this is regarding David Dalglish, newest book to be released in winter, I think 2024 or winter 2025. But this is the first book in the Astral Kingdoms trilogy. The title of the book is Radiant King. And this is the premise. Once there were six ever living siblings, blessed and cursed with immortality, who remembered nothing of their creation. They vowed to wear no crowns and sit upon no thrones. But when Eder, the eldest, forsakes this sacred promise, those closest to him must stop him before he breaks their family and the world apart. 
Pharaoh vows to crush his brother's kingdom and destroy his fanatical church, and he is not the only one hunting Eder. There are those who decry Eder as a blasphemer. There are those who simply want revenge for the havoc his rule has wrought. But will their combined strength be enough to stop this powerful, single-minded tyrant? The story starts with the burning of a brother, and it will end with the burning of the world. I have actually read a few chapters of The Radiant King. David Douglas actually sent that to me, and I think this has the potential to become David Douglas' best book uh, so far. I am very excited about this one, and once I have the book, I will definitely read it and review it as soon as I can, once there is the cover art, of course. And speaking of David, this is not David Douglas, but this is David Liss. David Liss' debut novel, Violence and Vigilance, uh, this is a grimdark uh, epic fantasy debut novel, I think. It is currently priced at 99 cents on Amazon. And yeah, the cover art is done by Felix Ortiz. And I have wanted to read this one for quite a while now. I heard this is a great uh, grimdark fantasy inspired by Mad Max. So yeah, I look forward to reading this one. And if you think that this book looks interesting, well, make sure to get it on Amazon uh, as well, while the price is still really, really cheap. I think this discount will run until the 13th of December. So now let's talk about a TV show and movie adaptation. And first things first, this is regarding Attack on Titan a manga. Attack on Titan manga by Hajime Isayama ever since the ending of the anime, apparently the sales of the manga has skyrocketed to 140 million sales in total. This makes Attack on Titan by Hajime Isayama the 11th best-selling manga series of all time. 140 million sales. That is absolutely incredible, amazing, and well-deserved for Hajime Isayama. Attack on Titan is one of my favorite manga, and especially uh, anime, and I'm really happy that the series keeps on gaining the recognition it deserves. And speaking of best-selling manga, uh, but the best-selling manga this year is not Attack on Titan, it is not Jujutsu Kaisen, but apparently it is the sports manga Blue Lock. Yes, Blue Lock is the best-selling manga of the year. I have read many volumes in the manga series, and I actually was very excited about the anime adaptation, but after watching it, I actually somehow prefer the manga compared to the anime. So for now, I will have to resort to definitely uh, reading the manga instead of watching the anime. But I don't think you can go wrong with either of them. But if you want to read more stories, want to experience more of the stories, definitely read the manga because the manga has so many chapters ahead of the anime adaptation. And speaking of anime adaptation, Dan the Dan, which is a highly, highly praised manga series, is finally getting an anime adaptation as well. I don't know anything about this one except that this is bizarre and over-the-top anime and I think I will give it a try, either from the manga or the anime first, but yeah, it is getting an anime adaptation uh, next year. And one more news and then we will talk about Kickstarter campaign and then special edition. This is regarding House of the Dragon uh, Season 2. Uh, the teaser for House of the Dragon Season 2 is out now. You can actually check it out now. The teaser looks really good and it has been confirmed that House of the Dragon will last most likely until the fourth season. So it is, as expected, House of the Dragon, uh, the TV show adaptation uh, on Rise of the Dragon and also Fire and Blood will only adapt the Dance of Dragons. And then what happened after that most likely will not be adapted into the TV show. For now, anyway, hopefully uh, it will, hopefully. But for now, I think it is confirmed to last until the fourth season. And I look forward to watching it. Uh, I look forward to watching season two, for sure. I love season one. Uh, so much. Hopefully season 2 will be better compared to season 1. But that's it on the topic of new book news and also TV show and anime stuff. Now let's talk about Kickstarter campaign. And guess what? In this penultimate episode of SFF Spotlight, I have only one Kickstarter campaign to spotlight. I know, I know, it is crazy, right? Usually there will be like 5 Kickstarter campaign to spotlight, but I think this is because this is the end of the year and there aren't any, there aren't many uh, ongoing Kickstarter campaigns right now. And today I want to spotlight Spotlight, uh, the Warform Stormweaver series by Bryce O'Connor and also Luke Shmilenko for the first book. This is the paperback and the hardcover edition of Iron Prince and also Fire and Song. The Kickstarter campaign is a massive success right now at the time of recording this video. The Kickstarter campaign has exceeded 120,000 US dollars. And this first print run of Iron Prince and Fire and Song won't be your ordinary mass market novels. Not only will they be hand signed by Bryce O'Connor, 
but they will also include a full wrap dash jacket, a foil stamp illustrated case, and at least one custom illustrated end sheets by X Charney. The book's interior features high-end offset printing, Smithson binding, acid-free paper, and a custom interior design with embellished chapter headings by Sean T. King. War Form Stop Weaver is one series that I have always wanted to read, but something keeps on happening and well my determination to read iron prince keep on getting delayed and i'm hoping that this time before the book begins shipping hopefully i will get around to reading iron prince so uh, this means that i'll be reading and reviewing iron prince fingers crossed uh, early next year i heard so many great things about it plus the author has mentioned that this is a solo leveling uh, inspired uh, sci-fi novel and that is a huge plus for me because i love uh, solo leveling manhua uh, so damn much but yeah, if you're interested in this one, do check out the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, I think it is still ongoing right now for, I think, two weeks. As for the next topic, apparently I spoke too soon. There's still one more Kickstarter campaign to spotlight, and this will be regarding the upcoming Kickstarter campaign in February 13th, uh, 2024. I believe this is a mistake on the banner, but this is for the Raria Chronicles by Michael J. Sullivan. The Raria Chronicles for the first time ever, the first book and the second book will be getting a deluxe hardcover treatment, similar to all Michael J. Sullivan's books in the world of Elan. And on top of that, the death of Dulgad, the disappearance of Winter's daughter, and the upcoming Drumindor is getting the same treatment as well. The design looks nice, but there is one more thing to mention here. It has been confirmed that the Raria Chronicles will be ending on the 8th installment. Unless Michael J. Sullivan suddenly decide to write a sequel series to the Raria Revelations, then this 8th installment will be the final Royce and Hadrian story. And well, I think it will be bittersweet to say goodbye to them, but I cannot deny that I am excited to read all of this. So that's it for Kickstarter campaign, now let's talk about special edition. And for the next one, well, I have great news and this is for the Curious King edition of the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. This is the second product after The Blade Itself by Curious King. And as you probably know, I absolutely love The Blade Itself Curious King edition, and this makes me incredibly excited to see what they will come up with for the edition of the fifth season, for their own edition of the fifth season. And Curious King has confirmed that their edition, all their edition of the fifth season are sold out now. And Anthony, the owner of Curious King, has revealed the end paper by John Anthony Di Giovanni for the fifth season of their own edition. And I think it looks absolutely beautiful. John Anthony Di Giovanni always nail his job uh, excellently, and this is another proof. I'm curious to find out whether the fifth season will be able to top the Blade itself or not in terms of overall quality and production value, because the Blade itself, the letter press printing of the Blade itself Curious King Edition is staggeringly beautiful, and it will be very hard to top. And for the next three special edition, these are all from Grim Oak Press. And yeah, I think I have mentioned this in a few of my previous episodes, but this time all of them have been confirmed so let's start with the big one first this is for the name of the wind by patrick rothfuss the first book in the king killer chronicle is getting the grim oak press edition treatment and well sean speakman and also the entire team at grim oak press are determined to make this the most beautiful edition of the name of the wind so far mark simonetti is on board as the illustrator whether it is for the dust jackets or the interior illustrations and there will be new interior illustrations being put into this edition of the name of the wind on top of all the interior illustrations that Max Simonetti has done for the French illustrated edition of The Name of the Wind. So yeah, this one, this special edition will contain a lot of artworks. Grim Oak Press have confirmed there will be four editions from the relatively the most affordable one up to the most expensive one. So I think this will be like standard and then numbered and then probably uh, leathered and then I have no idea. I have no idea what else but uh, they are going all out on this and they have mentioned there will be new dust jackets artwork as well. The pre-order for the name of the win Grim Oak Press Edition will take place on the 7th of February 2024 and then there are more. This is for Malice. Malice by John Gwynn. Uh, the Grim Oak Press Edition, the signature page looks absolutely gorgeous. It has been revealed and the full cover art has been revealed as well. The cover art is done by Marcus Winnie. Marcus Winnie is the artist behind the Shadow of the Gods and also the Hunger of the Gods cover art. He is back to do the cover art of the Faithful and the Fallen Grim Oak Press edition. The interior illustrations will be done by Sam White. 
it goes without saying that this is one of my most anticipated special edition uh, to get next year. This is Malice from The Faithful and the Fallen, one of my top favorite series of all time. I think many of you know how much I love the Banished Land saga by John Gwynn. Love it very much and I think for this one, the pre-order will take place on the second quarter of the year 2024. And finally, Servant of Empire by Raymond E. Fies and Jenny Wirtz. The cover art has been revealed as well. The cover art, just like their edition of Daughter of the Empire, is illustrated by Jenny Words again and this one somehow managed to top the cover art of the first book. Rift War Empire Trilogy is one of my favorite trilogies. I think it is even better compared to the Rift War Saga, the first series in the Rift War cycle. And I still don't have a copy of Daughter of the Empire. I will try to get it uh, someday. If only the shipping fee is not too brutal, I think I would have get it because the shipping fee from Grim Oak Press uh, to my place is 100, almost 100 US dollars. It's as expensive as the book, but the pre-order for Servant of the Empire, I think just like Malice, will take place on the second quarter of 2024. And finally, the last Grim Oak press news that I will spotlight today is regarding one of the interior illustrations for The Stone of Farewell by Tad Williams, the second book in the Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn trilogy. I own the Grim Oak press edition of the Dragon Bone Chair, and I'm really uh, keeping my fingers crossed, I can acquire the Stone of Farewell as well. I love Memory Sorrow and Thorn Trilogy, and Donato Giancola once again did such an amazing job on the cover art and this interior illustrations. Only one has been revealed, but for this one, uh, the pre-order will actually take place on January 2024. So yeah, really soon after New Year. And speaking of pre-order taking place soon after New Year, well, the next piece of news will be for the Broken Binding editions. And the Broken Binding has revealed the new, their new Broken Binding press title. And Broken Binding hasn't actually confirmed this, but Felix Hortis has actually tweeted this. So yeah, this is uh, definitely Theoretically, because I don't want to confirm it for you, but yeah, theoretically, this is Never Die by Rob J. Hayes. The cover art is done by Felix Ortiz. Absolutely stunning. I mean, uh, Rob J. Hayes and also Felix Ortiz, I think they are great combinations. Every time Felix Ortiz is doing a cover art or interior illustrations for Rob J. Hayes, they all always turned out spectacular. And this one is probably their best combo uh, so far. Take a look at this. This cover art of Never Die reminded me a lot of Akira Kurosawa films or The Ghost of Tsushima. And yeah, loved it very much. I think this is very fitting to the Mortal Techniques uh, series. One of my favorite series really, and it is probably the best series by Rob J. Hayes so far, prior to reading uh, The God Eater Saga next year anyway. As for the final topics on Special Edition, this will be regarding all of them published by Orbit Books. It is now possible to actually buy the deluxe edition of Ancillary Justice, and then Caliban's War and Abaddon's Gate, and finally Rui Nation by Anthony Reynolds. The one for Rui Nation actually looks the best one. It comes with a slipcase and then there will be fully colored interior illustrations as well. I really like reading Ruination though. It is the first League of Legends uh, novel and I'm really glad to see Orbit is giving the deluxe treatment for this book and hopefully more in the future. So that's it for the Kickstarter campaign and special edition section. Now let's talk about cover reveals. I only have two cover reveals to spot at today and the first one will be for The Sunlit Man by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, this is the cover art for their mass market edition, the one that will be published by Tor Books and also Golangs. This will not have any interior illustrations. This will only come with a new cover art. The cover art to this edition of The Sunnet Man is illustrated by Danny Schlitz. So Danny has actually done a cover art for Brandon Sanderson. It was for the new trade paperback edition of Miss Bourne trilogy and they all turned out really damn good. And the same can be said for this one as well. But there is a bit of a disappointing news that comes with this cover reveal. The UK edition will actually use the same cover art as well. So for those of you who collected Brandon Sanderson's books in the UK edition, this will be for the first time even worse than Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, which by the way looks absolutely gorgeous. But for the first time, the color scheme will not match the white color scheme of Brandon Sanderson Cosmere books, uh, the UK edition. Yes, Brandon Sanderson and his team has mentioned they are thinking of actually shifting uh, art design and direction for their upcoming books for the Cosmere. And I think it is happening now. The UK cover art will feature the same cover art as the US edition of The Sunnet Man. 
I am really lucky that I don't collect Brandon Sanderson's books in the UK edition. Otherwise, I will be incredibly pissed about this. Not gonna lie, I hate cover changes. But speaking of Golangs, the final cover reveals I want to spot that today will be for another book published by Thor Books and also Golangs, and they use the same cover art again. And this one is for Witch of the Red Winter by Ed McDonald. The cover art for this one, just like the previous two books, is illustrated by Galandara. And yeah, the entire trilogy has a beautiful cover art and the same goes for this one uh, as well. I haven't started reading the trilogy though. Unfortunately, regarding the quality of the books, I cannot say anything yet because I haven't started reading the trilogy yet. I did, however, read uh, Blackwing by Ed McDonald, which I think is a great debut novel, but I haven't read anything else by the author. The next cover reveals I want to spotlight will be for a special edition, and this will be for the 17th book in the Dresden Files series by Jim Butcher, Battleground. So Subterranean Press has revealed their own cover art for their edition of Battleground and I think it looks amazing. The cover art is once again done by Vincent Chong and there will be interior illustrations by the same artist as well. But I do not think it will be easy to get a copy of this one unless you own uh, the previous editions of the Dresden Files Subterranean Press edition first. And here's another cover reveal to Spotlight. This one is illustrated by Andrew Maleski and this will be for the newest book by Michael R. Fletcher, The Storm Beneath the World, the first book in the Children of Illusion uh, saga duology. So yeah, this will be a completely new book in a new series, but I think there's a good chance this will take place in the same universe as all Michael R. Fletcher's Grim Dark Fantasy universe. Other than that, if you want to know all the details regarding The Storm Beneath the World, I will leave you the link to the interview and the details of the cover reveals in the description down below. And now we move on to the final section of SFF Spotlight. It is time to talk about about new noteworthy release and for these next five books all of them are released on the same date on the 5th of December so yeah they are all out now and the first one is for The Bitter Crown by Justin Lee Anderson. This is the sequel to The Lost War, one of my favorite, uh, used to be one of my favorite self-published fantasy books, but it has been picked up by Orbit Books. And after like four years, I finally get the sequel to The Lost War. Although The Bitter Crown actually do begins with a detailed summary of what happened uh, in the first book, I think uh, because it has been four years, I think it will be necessary for me to do a second read of The Lost War first before I read The Bitter Crown, and I hope I can do that within uh, next year. And then another book that was originally sub-published as well, this is Griever's Blood by Alexander Darwin. Uh, the second book, the traditionally published edition picked up by Orbit, is also out now. I really like Griever's Blood. I think Griever's Blood is the best of the trilogy of the Combat Code Saga, and I expect the traditionally published edition will receive a new round of editings and changes, which most likely will improve the overall quality of the book, but I haven't done uh, second read of the entire Combat Code Saga. So I definitely cannot confirm whether the improvement is a lot or not. And moving on to the next one, this is for the Dragons of Deep Wood Fan by Bradley B. Liu. This is a Dragon Rider epic fantasy. This is the first book in the book of the whole, I think, trilogy. Yeah, I think this one will be a trilogy. But yeah, this is a Dragon Rider epic fantasy from Bradley B. Liu, the author behind the Song of the Shattered Sand series. I have read only 12 Kings in Sharakai. I haven't read uh, the Dragons of Deep Wood fan yet, but I know this one is a completely uh, new book in a completely new series and world unrelated to the Song of the Shattered Sand. Hopefully, it will be better compared to the first book of the Song of the Shattered Sand, but yeah, the book is out now. Dragon Rider Fantasy usually is kind of like my comfort read, so hopefully it will be a great one. And I still have two more noteworthy released to spotlight. The next one is for the newest book in the Sane of Steel series by T. Kingfisher. Paladin's Fate, the fourth book in the Sane of Steel series, is out now. I don't know anything about this series except that it's been highly praised to those of you who love reading cozy and also uh, romanticy. So probably this one counts as cozy romanticy, but T. Kingfisher or Ursula Vernon, I think all of her books keeps on gaining great receptions anyway, especially Natal and Boone. And although I don't have this on my TBR pile right now, but for those of you who are waiting, for this one to be out because I know it has been a while since the third book of the series. Well, the book is out now. And finally, the last release and the last topic I want to spot that today, this will be for The Engineer by Will White. This one will be a sequel uh, to The Captain. And I think someone has mentioned to me that this series do take place in the same universe, not the same world as the Cradle series by Will White. So The Engineer is the sequel to The Captain 
And as far as cover art goes, I think this one is so much superior compared to the first book, uh, The Captain. I think the cover art to The Captain doesn't look uh, really good, but The Engineer, I think this one looks really nice. I still don't have a plan to read this series anytime soon, but I love Cradle, so I think there is a really good chance I will read uh, this series too uh, someday, once there are more books in the series. So yeah! Uh, that's the end of SFF Spotlight episode 46. I know that's a lot of topics from negative to positive one. Do let me know what you think about all of them in the comment section down below. As I said in the beginning of this video, I still have one more episode that I want to spotlight uh, before the year ends. I hope all of you will tune in on that as well. And until then, as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.